All right, hello parents. We're gonna jump into module two of Ready, Set, Go. We're gonna be covering our educational platforms, which are Aries, Parent Square, and eCadence. So Aries, it is our um, record management system that we utilize here at AUHSD. Uh, Parent Square is our communication system that is housed within Aries. And then eCadence is our new uh, learning management system that's replacing Schoology. So our objectives for today is learning a little bit more about these platforms. We're not gonna dive in too deep into them. We're gonna give you a basic understanding of them and also help you set up your account if you have not done so already. So first one we're gonna jump into is our Aries Parent Portal. So by the end of this session, you will understand the dashboard, I'll learn how to read the gradebook and learn the different attendance codes we have. Uh, so most of our parents already have an Aries account created. You did need to create one so you could complete data confirmation uh, during registration. So we'll go ahead and look at what a mock account looks like right now. Uh, when you log into Aries, you want to make sure that you are in the correct Aries account. Each school district has their own. You will know if you're in the Anaheim Union High School District 1 by looking up on the top. So it'll say Anaheim Union High School District. Um, best way to get into the Aries site is going to the school website, uh, lexington.auhsd.us. Go ahead and click on the parent tab and then you'll see Aries parent portal. I have a lot of families that Google Aries uh, portal and then a school district that's outside of Anaheim will pop up, whether it's something out in Northern California and Riverside, somewhere else in Orange County, you've got to make sure that you are logging into the correct Aries portal account, which is the one for Anaheim Union. So let me go ahead and show you guys a mock account. So right now the school district is Eagle Unified School District. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, log in. So type in your email address, it's already on there since it's a mock account. Go ahead and press next. Password, sign in. And then you'll get into your dashboard. So this is what your dashboard is going to look like. Uh, for some parents, it might look a little bit differently. Aries recently updated the look and feel to their page. If yours doesn't look like this, uh, this is the new view. You can go up here under your email address and go ahead and change it to the new view. So you'll have an option if you have the old view to change it to this view right here. So uh, this parent right here has a couple different students tied to their account. And then on here, you can select the actual student you want to view. So I believe right now we're taking a look at Abel, but if we want to take a look at Alan, we can click on Alan. Oh, and Alan's information is on here. We want to take a look at Christy. Christy's basic information is on here. And same thing for Alice. And then hers looks a little bit different, uh, but it should be the same. Oh, there it is, there it popped up. So same information, her classes and whatnot. Um, our view is gonna look a little bit different than what we're seeing here, but it's gonna be kind of a similar concept. Uh, so this is kind of like the main dashboard, but the view I like to go to is student info and profile. So this to me gives me a cleaner look. It's what I personally like uh, on here. We're still looking at Alice. You can see that on here on the top and also with her picture up here. You can see the period she has, the name of the class, the name of the teacher, room number, grade book, which we'll go ahead and dive into in a little bit. These are actual hyperlinks that'll take you to another part of Aries. You have the grade. A uh, trend, a trend you will either see a straight line across, a line that is going up or a line that is going down. The trend gives you an idea whether a student is improving their grades, they are remaining uh, constant with their grade or their grade is going down. So you'll see that little line that'll tell you uh, which way the grade is trending. And then you have missing assignments. Missing assignment, it's a great visual indicator to see how many assignments your student is missing, uh, but don't 100% rely on this, since this missing assignment thing can be a little bit deceiving. 
for this one right here in Spanish one, we do see that there are six missing assignments. Uh, once we look into the grade book, I'll let you know why it could be a little bit deceiving. Uh, past five days here, it gives you the attendance for the student in the past five days. And then something neat to also look at is the last updated date. So the last updated date, we'll go ahead and let you know when the teacher actually updated that grade book. Uh, so these are all July 24th. If we look at a different student, those might change. So let's look at Alan. So Alan has uh, several different uh, grades as well. You can see on the first period, last updated January 1st, July 21st, 24th, September 3rd, July 24th. So his last updated dates are different for his grade book. Uh, we'll go back and look at Alice again though, and then we'll go ahead and look into her grade book. So uh, we saw that she has six missing assignments in Spanish. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on with Alice. So if you click on Spanish uh, on the grade book right there, uh, this will be a grade book. It'll be a breakdown of all the assignments that the student has had so far. Uh, assignment number one, assignment number two, three, four, so on and so forth. Um, in different categories as well. We see these are all homework assignments. We have the date completed, the date assigned, the due date. So a lot of useful information on here. We have the teacher name and email up here as well. For our AUHSD uh, faculty, a lot of the emails are gonna be the last name underscore first or second letter of their first name. So for myself, it's Barba underscore J. For Mr. Klatsker, it's Klatsker underscore D. Mrs. Bernhard, Bernhard underscore A. And then uh, Mrs. Choi is Choi underscore L. Um, so that's kind of the sequence it follows for uh, teacher and staff uh, email addresses. Uh, like I said, if it is a popular last name, popular first name, it might be the first and second letter. So if there was another Jonathan Barba within the district, or there was a Juan Barba, it would be uh, for my Barba underscore J-O, uh, just so they could kind of distinguish them. Um, so going back to uh, the missing assignments, on here, you could select show only missing assignments, and that, and then we see all the little boxes in red. So this gives us a quick little indicator of what assignment is missing when it was due, like I said, when it was assigned. But go ahead and uncheck this and look at all the assignments. So this one, you can see the score is 10 out of 10, 22 out of 26, 30 out of 30, uh, 20 out of 20, 10 out of 10. Some teachers though, instead of leaving that box marked red as a missing assignment, they'll actually enter a score. So if they enter a zero out of 10, um, it's still gonna be a missing assignment, but the way that teacher is calculating it is a little bit different. So they're not using the missing assignment link, but they're actually giving them a grade for that assignment. So if uh, they don't have a red box, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have all the assignments turned in. They might still have a zero out of 10, a zero out of 30, depending on what that is. And that's still a missing assignment. Um, each teacher has different policies as well as to when they could turn in late work or missing assignment. So it's great to check the teachers and check the syllabuses for them. Uh, we're gonna go all the way to the bottom as well to look at another cool feature on ARIES, which is this. It's a category breakdown. So each of these assignments right here, it lets you know whether it's an exam, whether it's homework, what else we have some classwork, and then it gives you a category breakdown at the bottom. Um, and you can see the percentage of the grade on here as well. So not all things are weighed equally. Um, as you can see this one, participation is worth 10% of the grade. Homework is 10%, final exams 10%, uh, exam is worth a 40%, classwork 10 and projects are worth 20. So uh, some of the points might outweigh some of the others. So even though you might have a thousand points in participation, and only, uh, let's say, 50 points for your final exam, the, or sorry, just for your exams, not the final exam. Uh, for the exams, you might have 50 points for exams, 1,000 points for participation. The points for the exam are going to outweigh the points for participation. So that's another thing to look at. Maybe your kid is really doing amazing in participation and homework and um, the projects but they're not so hot on those exams. And those exams are gonna make a bigger portion of their final grade than those other three combined. So 
So we're taking a look at Spanish. If we scroll all the way up again, we could actually go to another grade book. So taking a look at Spanish right now, if I wanna to go to the third period, we have science right there. We have the extra credit lab. So extra credit uh, homework lab, we have notebooks, same thing. I wanna to go to the different, let's go to English. You can have, go ahead and do that here as well. Um, other thing to look at would be grades. Grades is going to give you a breakdown of what a student gets for the report card. So if you need to go back and take a look at the report cards or print it out for whatever reason, that's where you would see it. It would be under grades. So you can see what they got the first quarter, first semester, third quarter, second semester, and number of credits number of absences, number of tardies, and then any comments that the teacher might add. So pleasure to have in class by a fourth period. Um, so once again, grades and grade book details are gonna be what you look at the most. These other things are not necessarily uh, too much information right now for our junior high students. And on our uh, portal, you're not gonna see all of these either. So like I said, we are looking at a demo account. So we're not necessarily looking at all the features that we have available for AUHSD. Uh, go ahead and go back, go back to a dashboard. Now we're going to take a look at attendance, but we'll go back to our dashboard. So you can see what that looks like. So on our dashboard here, you also see a quick summary of attendance. Uh, so you've had zero absences this month, zero this week, zero tardy, zero and excuse absences, and then it has days present, which uh, this month is three hundred um, percent attendance. So we can go back and look at a more in-depth view of attendance. So attendance and attendance. So attendance on here, it's going to give you a more clear picture of what's going on. You can see trends where, okay, there's a lot happening on this student for period six. We see a lot of Vs. Uh, don't know what Vs are. We could go ahead and look at our legend in a second to see what those mean. So it seems to be something going on on Tuesdays where they're missing class a lot. Uh, on this one, they missed class as well on 8-6 on first period, second period, third period, and fourth period. Um, holiday on 9-6. We could go ahead and see what's going on for the rest of the school year. We have another holiday on 11-10. Uh, holidays from 12-20 to 12-31. So it gives you like a view for the entire school year of what's going on. Also another breakdown down here. You can see those absences. So like I said, up there, we saw a lot of absences six period. And you can see on here as well. It's like, oh, they've been absent a lot. Uh, six period, they have five absences on six period. A one on excuse. And like I said, we can go ahead and look at what those marks actually mean by clicking on legend. So, and look on here. So A is an unverified absence. That's usually gonna be the first thing that we look at. Just because a student is marked with an A though during the school day does not mean that they weren't in class or they weren't present. Uh, usually for attendance reasons, you will get notified after a student has been absent for two or more classes. Uh, the reason that is, is because a student might be up at the main office, might be talking to a counselor, uh, might be doing something during a period where the teacher does mark them absent, they might show up late to class and teacher mark them absent, and they might have to go ahead and fix that to a uh, tardy, a late to class. I'll mark later on in the day or the following day. So that's why we don't send out notifications for one absence. It'll be for two absences or more. If you have any questions, you can always contact the main office and speak to Mrs. Crumley to fix an absence or correct anything that needs to be corrected. Uh, so the legend, going back to that, it'll give you a breakdown of what each of those code means. You have a doctor note for D, you have an I for an illness. We don't use all of them. Uh, here at Lexington, you have S for suspended, you have a T for a tardy, U for an unexcused absent, uh, V for uh, an activity, so verified and not absent. So that can be, like I said, something where they're in the main office or something. Uh, you have X excused absences. So you have those different codes. Our codes are going to look a little bit differently on ARI. So once you go in there, you can see what each code means. Or if you have questions, you could always call them in the office as well, and we'll be able to help you out with what the code means. Uh, so that's attendance in a nutshell. 
Um, those are pretty much the basics for Aries as far as the portals go and what parents can see. The other cool thing is some new feature that Aries just implemented. I've seen this on some parent accounts, but not all of them. So if you go under your email address up here, you could actually do a configure grid alerts. And that'll give you the option to go ahead and get notified when a grade for a class falls below a certain mark, it goes, below, it goes above a certain mark. Or same thing for assignments. And if assignment is missing or if assignment gets below like, let's say 50% or it goes below 20%, you could go ahead and make those adjustments there. So you could go ahead and add a new alert. I wanna learn alerts for grades that uh, fall below a B. So if your student is an A student and you wanna be notified when those fall below B, you have that option right there. But if your student is really um, trying to improve their grade, he has a C right now, and you're trying to get to that C plus, you could do that alert as well. So I wanna alert rises above a C. So it's at a C right now. If it goes above a C, I wanna know because I wanna uh, celebrate my kid and celebrate his accomplishments. The other thing you have are missing assignment alerts. You turn that on or off, and then you could also add a new alert. So I want alerts for assignments that scores are above or below a certain percentage. So anything below uh, 30%, I want to know if my kid is getting an assignment below 30%, and then I will get notified on that. There's another notification uh, option on here that parents have for Anaheim that's not on this demo account, and I'll show you once we return to that PowerPoint presentation, and that's to get a weekly update. We'll go ahead and go next. So weekly updates. Is it possible to get a weekly report on my child's grades on Aries sent to my email? The answer is yes to that. So same thing, you're gonna to go to the same area where we just were at. We're gonna select parent notification preferences. And then you have this option to select a weekly progress report email. You can select the date and time that you want. You go ahead and save it. It's easy as one, two, three. So this is just a, kind of a quick little exercise. Uh, attendance from the images shown below, is there a school on 8-9? We could see that there is no school starting 8-9. They're a, off for a week. And then what date was the student absent? Uh, if you look, absence right here on 6-16, unverified absence. So there they are right there, no school 8-9 and unverified on 6-16. Uh, the next portion we're gonna go into is Aries communication. So Aries communication for our parents that were here last year, it's being replaced by Parent Square. It used to be Signal Kit. Signal Kit did get bought out by Parent Square. It's a very similar system, got a little bit more bells and whistles with Parent Square. Um, with Parent Square, you should have got an email from the district on how to go ahead and set up your account. Pretty much all parents already have an account. You just have to go in there and confirm it. So it is helped within Aries communicate or within the Aries platform. So in Aries, if you click communications, it'll take you to Parent Square. The first time you log in, you do have to confirm your account. You'll get a little pop-up like this. Have to click and accept the user agreement. And for the next step, is just making sure we have your correct contact information. Uh, you're going to verify your email. You're going to verify your phone number and verify uh, we have you connected to the right children. If you need to update any of that, you can go ahead and do that on there. So once you create your account, dashboard. Congratulations. If you are watching this video, it means that your school is using Parent Square. You may be asking yourself, what is Parent Square? Parent Square is a safe, secure, and modern approach to communication and collaboration between school and home. It is a central hub for all district, school, grade level, class, and group notifications about your children. Better still, school communication comes right to your fingertips in a way that is convenient to you, whether it be email, text, or app notification. You will also receive texts or voice calls for urgent alerts and reminders. You should have received an invitation from ParentSquare via email or text asking you to activate your account. You can also request another activation invitation with the email or phone number that you provided to your child's school at parentsquare.com or on the app. If you don't remember the information on file at your child's school, please fill out your Join Your School form to send a request to your child's school to add you to Parent Square today. 
Parent Square also has easy-to-use apps for iOS and Android phones that can be downloaded from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Once logged in, you'll see your custom Parent Square feed. This page shows all information related to your children, including any school-wide, grade level, class, or group-specific information. No more need to search through emails, schools, or multiple websites to find important information. Prefer text messages over email? No problem! From your account page, you can update your notification preferences, so information is coming how and when you'd like it. Language settings can also be changed, so information is coming in your preferred language. Parent Square is great at increasing collaboration and helps you get involved in your school communities. You will automatically receive information from the school office and your kids' classes, and any groups you or your kids belong to. You may also join a public group within the school. You can participate with just a click of a button. Parent Square allows you to fill out a form quickly. No more handouts and permission slips lost at the bottom of backpacks. You can sign up to bring in an item or RSVP for an event. You can also comment on and appreciate a post. Please give these generously to show your school community support. Using Parent Square, you can also chat directly with a teacher or staff member using our Messages feature. This keeps all communication in one place without the need of additional directories or email addresses. We also have a personalized calendar to keep you up to date with school events, and our photo library stores all photos that have been shared over the course of the year. Thank you for joining Parent Square. Register your account, download the app, and start interacting with your school community today. Yeah, so just two things to add to uh, Parent Square. If you go to your settings and update your notification settings, you do have the option to select a daily digest. Uh, with that daily digest option, uh, you will get all messages that are sent out throughout the day at 6 p.m. So if I send out something at 10 a.m., it's your class career says something at 1 p.m., uh, one of the teachers sends out a message at 2 p.m., uh, you will not get those until 6 p.m., roughly around 6 p.m., all in one message. So that is what the Daily Digest feature is. Uh, we do have an option to overwrite that if the, it's an emergency and we need to get something out right away. Uh, we have the option to overwrite the Daily Digest uh, option. Um, also, for phone calls, we try to limit phone calls until after 4 p.m. Um, when we make phone calls, it clogs up our system here. So most phone calls will go out after 4 unless it is some sort of emergency or unless we accidentally sent it out uh, early. Um, so there's a little information to add to the little video that you just saw. Another great feature is for families that English is not their primary language, they could go ahead and change their uh, language notification settings to Farsi, Korean, Spanish, Arabic, Vietnamese, whatever it may be. And they should receive the messages that we sent out in their home language. Uh, for the message feature, they could also write in their home language. Um, so if I am, a, Spanish-speaking parent, I'll write my message in Spanish. I send that to Mr. Klatsker. Mr. Klatsker will receive that message in English, even though I typed it in Spanish. Um, same thing for Korean, Vietnamese, Arabic families. Go ahead and write that language in your home language if you have that option on. And then when that message is received, it will be received in uh, the language that the user has selected. So. Download the Parent Square app. It's an amazing app. I use it all the time. I get all my messages on here. I especially love that message feature. It, uh, it's more like a text messaging feature when I'm able to communicate with parents. So uh, I would recommend it if you guys like to uh, be kept on the know with all the messages that are being sent out. And also, if you lose something in your email address, you can always log into the Parent Square app or log into Aries and click on that communications tab to see all the messages that, that have been sent out throughout the school year. So next we're gonna jump into eCadence. For eCadence, I don't have a mock account that I'll be able to show parents. So it really is more of a brief overview onto what eCadence is. eCadence is a new uh, platform that's being developed specifically for AUHSD. So it's not costing us any money. Um, that's why we're going from Schoology to eCadence. Uh, Schoology was quite an expensive amount. Uh, eCadence is completely free. It is being developed for us. It was piloted last year through uh, CBA, Cambridge Virtual Academy. Um, our teachers and students at CBA have given eCadence a lot of feedback. Uh, they're going to keep on working 
on updating the system, improving it, and adding features that our students and staff see that they need, as well as our parents. So they recently just created these parent accounts. They're going to uh, keep on improving them. So we're going to give you a little taste of what the parent portal dashboard is. And then I'll let you guys know how you can create your account if you haven't done so already. Welcome to an introductory video about the Parent Portal Dashboard. After logging into eCadence, the first thing you will see is the dashboard, which displays the student profiles of all of your children who are enrolled. If you are a first-time user or are simply trying to find the profile for one of your children, simply click on Add Student in the top in order to input their student ID, as well as their phone number that they have registered with eCadence in order to pull up their student profile. In the top left of the dashboard are all of the student profiles that you currently have access to. Clicking on any of the student's names will take you to their respective profile. The student profiles themselves have a lot of useful information. First and foremost, when you start clicking on a student's profile, you can immediately see their progress in a particular class, and you can change which class you're looking at in the top. Additionally, on the left-hand side of the profile overview, you can see what school they are enrolled in, as well as any groups that they might be a part of. Now let's move on to classes in the top left. Here, you can see all of the classes that this particular student is enrolled in, and clicking on any of the classes listed will take you to that class's respective page. Just to the right of classes is attendance. Here, you can track very specifically the attendance of each of your children. More specifically, this goes beyond simply tracking whether or not they even showed up to class, but rather how long they remained logged in as a better indication of whether or not they were actually paying attention in class or were participating in it. And last but not least is the ePortfolios function. This feature is still being developed, but upon its release, a more detailed guide will be made about ePortfolios. So that was a quick breakdown of eCadence. Um, for our parents, if you have not created an account, uh, you can do so by visiting our school websites um, or logging into the portal. So go on our website, Lexington Junior High, lexington.auhsd.us. If you go under students or parents, you'll see both the ARIES account and also the eCadence account. So it's the same links, whether you go under the students or the parent account. At the bottom down here, you also see the login information. So if you click on there, you'll see the login for Aries, login for eCanon. It's the same account, whether you're going in as a student or a parent. Um, so for eCanon, we were told that parents who have an Aries parent account automatically had an eCadence account created. They just had a temporary password that was created for them. So that was supposed to be emailed to parents. I know a lot of parents never received that. So if you did not receive that, you can log into eCadence. At the bottom of eCadence, it'll say forgot password. Go ahead and enter your email that you used for Aries and uh, get that forgot password link. Uh, so you could go ahead and reset that password. If you do not get that email uh, to reset your password, then you most likely don't have an account. You could go ahead and create one. Uh, so when you log into uh, eCadence, parents don't have an account yet, you sign up. So that'll ask you for the student's ID number, their VPC, and uh, the phone number. Oh, it is not on here. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. Cadence. So uh, parents don't have an account yet, you gotta go ahead and sign up. And this is the information right here. You'll enter your student email, the VPC code and student phone number. For the VPC code, you could find that under your student's Cadence account. So have them log into their Cadence account. They'll click my profile and then select parent account and that'll have the parent VPC code for you there. You could also log into your own ARIES account and get that VPC code under student info, demographics, student data two, and VPC. So verification passcode. It is crossed off. It'll be crossed off on your end as well. But once you click on this little box, it'll reveal what that code is. So there's two ways to get it through ARIES or through your student's eCadence account. Um, so let me go back to the presentation. 
So that pretty much wraps up the presentation for today. Uh, next slide is just a Venn diagram to kind of see the difference what Aries, Decadent, and uh, Parent Square are. Once again, Aries is our student information system. It's a record system uh, that houses our grade book, uh, grades, attendance records, um, all that sort of stuff. Parent Square is integrated into Aries. It's our mass communication system. So that's where we send out all our emails, our phone calls. And then you have eCadence. eCadence is our learning management system. It is what's replacing Schoology, similar to a Google Classroom, uh, similar to Canva. Uh, so that's what the different portals are. Um, you could go ahead and contact me if you have any questions, if you have issues uh, getting your accounts going. You could also contact passwords at Aries dot or passwords at auhsd.us for Aries information, uh, Aries account information or support, or support at ecadence.com if you do need some sort of uh, password or uh, account support for ecadence. So uh, this is just some of the quotes that we have from the experts, some of our parents who have utilized these platforms previously. So thank you guys once again for joining us for this presentation. If you have any questions, once again, go ahead and call the main office ask to speak to Mr. Barba or email me at barba underscore j at auhsd.us. That is B-A-R-B-A -A, uh, underscore j at auhsd.us. Thank you guys. Have a good day.